Hi everybody, good to be with you today. Uh, my name is Pete Gordon, I'm the Associate uh, Minister at Woven St Margaret's and uh, I hope everyone's doing well. You know, in the midst of these difficult and uncertain times, know that we are praying for you and we want to do all that we can to support you. So if you're in self-isolation, please do let us know and let us know how we can help you. And if you're not and you want to join in the effort of helping those that are, please do get in contact with us. All the information you need is on the website in terms of connecting with us and emails and, and phone numbers and so on. But we want to do all that we can in this time to be Jesus' hands and feet, not only to our church family, but also to the different communities that are around us. So if you want to help, please do let us know. And today I'm doing the short devotional. And we're going to be looking at Mark 1 verses 14 to 15. And it says this. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Now at this point, um, Jesus has been fairly quiet. We've seen in other Gospels a bit of Jesus' journey growing up, but nothing that would suggest that he has stepped into his ministry. To step into his purpose of being on the earth until we get to this passage. And we see at the start of these verses that John gets arrested. And then all of a sudden, Jesus enters the frame and begins to preach the good news. Now, notice how this happened straight after John was arrested. Not before, but afterwards. Notice how Jesus picks his moment to act. Jesus knew that John was creating the way for him. And for as long as he was doing that, Jesus didn't need to come forward. He bided his time, but he knew that his time would come. And it did after John was arrested. And kind of what we see here is John has passed on the baton to Jesus to step into and fulfill the ancient prophecy that we see in Isaiah. And God gave Jesus the green light to advance the kingdom movement that had already begun through John. So this was an important moment. John created the way for Jesus, the way to step into all that God had for his son and for his people here on earth. And this was the first time where we see Jesus' public ministry begin. So Jesus goes into Galilee after John is arrested and preaches the good news of God. Now Jesus outlines what that looks like by firstly making two statements and then by kind of giving us two things that he urges his followers to do as a result of that. And the first statement he says was this, the time has come. And it's an epic opening line. It's the kind of thing that you could kind of hear ringing out in cinemas all around the world to kind of set the scene for the film that is to come. The time has come. You can hear the the voiceover artist kind of using that language to kind of create this um, energy, to create this buzz about what is to happen next. And this statement is that. This statement screams change. It screams a new beginning. It's a time to act, a time to change how things have been done previously. Jesus is declaring that God's time has come. The moment has arrived. All the centuries of preparation and prophecy are reaching their fulfillment. This was a time heavy with eternal significance. And we have to remember the people of Israel were expectant. They were waiting rather impatiently for the Messiah that had been prophesied. They hoped for a day that God would stand forth in glory and save them from the mess that they found themselves in. That God would set up his throne here on earth to rule in a more intimate and personal way. So this language would have resonated with them. They knew what the time was. They were hoping and expecting it day after day. The life-changing news that they had been waiting for was finally here. And we can see the significance of this statement through looking at the Greek word for time that's mentioned here. And that word is kairos. Now, Kairos doesn't describe a time in terms of a clock, but it describes a critical time, a moment in time that perhaps everything changes because it is the right time, a moment where God breaks into your circumstances with an event that makes all the difference. So we see the significance in this word. The time has come, time to bring a change in circumstance, to bring hope, peace, forgiveness to a world that desperately needed it and still does today. And it's important to recognise that this time isn't stationary. The time was then and it's still now. The good news of Jesus' arrival is still relevant to us today. The time has come. Jesus' declaration of a new beginning that we are invited into day after day. And that is good news for us. Jesus then goes on to say his second statement. The kingdom of God is near. 
And this was Jesus' essential message to all of his people. It's nearer than it's ever been before because of his arrival on the earth to be the saviour the people wanted and desperately needed. This statement screams of a God who was solely transcendent but is now also imminent. There's no longer distance and separation that there once was. And the basic meaning of the word kingdom in the Bible is God's kingly rule, his overall reign, his action, his lordship, his sovereign governance. And that's what Jesus is describing here by saying the kingdom of God. And what Jesus is saying here is that God's kingdom is established, is being established here on earth. And that's one of the reasons why Jesus came to earth in the first place, to reestablish God's kingdom, domain and authority here on the earth. And now this is really good news. And this good news points to the person and saving work of Jesus. And it points us to his kingdom. And Jesus spoke often of the reign of God. The gospel speaks of the work of God in human lives, drawing us into his reign and into his redemptive work. And I love Paul's words in Colossians 1, 12 to 14. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In the gospel, we have redemption, but we also have this wonderful exchange of kingdoms. We are no longer captives to the the kingdom of darkness, but instead are his children in the kingdom of the Son. And that's why the good news is a Kairos moment. Heaven, the kingdom of God, the place where the king dwells, has literally invaded earth through Jesus. Nothing will ever be the same again. Everything that they had heard and spoken about is about to be fulfilled and still is being fulfilled even today. And before this declaration, the rule and reign of God seemed so far off, but now it's near, near enough to be a part of, near enough to touch. But to be a part of it, Jesus outlines two things that are needed. The first is repentance. Jesus wanted the people to stop sinning and to turn away from the life that they were living. It was an invitation to choose to live differently and to come under the rule and reign of God. Now, repentance means just that. It means to literally turn around and walk in a different direction, to act differently from the current pattern of behaviour. So what we see from this passage here is that God requires us to turn away from our ungodly attitudes, words and deeds for us to be a part of his kingdom. God was calling the people of Israel to turn back to their God. And this had to happen before God could redeem Israel at last. And for us, repentance is necessary if we are to grow as disciples. But it's not easy. But it always leads us back into right relationship with God. John Piper says, Repenting means experiencing a change of mind that now sees God as true and beautiful and worthy of all of our praises and all our obedience. The call to repentance is a part of the announcement that this is the time for the great moment of freedom of God's rescue plan. And that's why the call to repentance goes with the call to belief. Many of Jesus' contemporaries trusted in all sorts of things. Their ancestry, their land, their temple, their laws. But Jesus was now calling them to trust the good news that their God was doing something new. But to get in on the act, they have to cut loose from their old ties, from their other ties. To repent of those things and to trust him and his message of new life. And what we see here is that belief requires commitment. You can't live your previous life and yet be committed to belief in the gospel. And it's interesting how much Mark focuses on baptism in the first few verses. A commitment to turn away from sin and a commitment to believe and trust in the gospel. If we don't believe in Jesus and the rule and reign of his kingdom, we don't believe in the good news. And we need to believe right now that the gospel is good news in the midst of the battle that we face today. It's easy in these times to choose not to believe. But when we do believe, it's powerful. If we truly believe in something, it changes the way that we live our lives. It affects all of those around us. And that is what we need right now. That is what our country needs, the good news. That is what our church needs, the good news. That is what our neighbours need, the good news. The power the good news has to change people's lives. So this statement that Jesus made thousands of years ago is still relevant to us today. God's time has come. The kingdom of God, even in the midst of everything that's going on right now in our world, is here. It's close enough to touch. But we need to repent 
of our ungodly ways. We need to turn around from the way our patterns of behaviour and choose to believe in the truth and the goodness of the gospel. We need to believe that the good news has and is changing the world one day at a time. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you for uh, these two verses in your word. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to recognise that your time has come, that your kingdom is near, near enough for us to touch. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be a people that repent of our ways, repent and turn away from ungodly patterns of behaviour. And that we would choose to fully and wholeheartedly trust in the good news of Jesus, the good news of the gospel. And Father, I pray that you would help us to be carriers of your good news to all of those around us, particularly in this time. Show us how to be people who are your hands and your feet, even in the midst of the situations and circumstances we face today. And finally, Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that that you would bring an end to this virus. I pray that we would have breakthrough now in this country and the rest of the world in Jesus' name. And I just pray your peace and your protection over every single one of us now, that we would trust you. We would trust in your good news. We would not be fearful. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.